In the last video, we left off with the definition of the inverse operation of a matrix, but I didn't actually tell you how to calculate the inverse of a matrix. So in this video, we'll go through the details of that. We'll begin with an important note on inverting a matrix. So for a matrix to have an inverse, it must be a square matrix. However, the important thing to keep in mind is just because you have a square matrix doesn't guarantee that it will have an inverse. So not all square matrices have an inverse. All right. So I'm going to give you the equation for calculating the inverse of a matrix without really telling you where it comes from for the sake of uh, efficiency and uh, focusing on computation, computations for mathematical methods. So the inverse of a matrix A can be calculated by the following equation. So the inverse of A is equal to this quantity. All right, here C is known as the cofactor matrix of A. That of A is the determinant of matrix A. And for now, you can just think of it as the determinant being a number associated with a square matrix. If you want a different interpretation, you can look at the three blue, one brown video uh, posted on Quarkus on determinants. And C with the subscript T denotes the transpose of the cofactor matrix C. Okay, and then using the index notation introduced in the last video, the transpose operation flips the rows with the columns. So if we have the element of matrix C in row I and column J, when we transpose it, that becomes uh, the element in row J and column I. And we'll see how to do this with an example shortly. So how do we build this cofactor matrix? All right, so We'll just denote this in terms of its elements. So it has to be a square matrix. All right. And here, the element of the cofactor matrix in row I and column J is equal to minus one plus the sum of whatever row you're in plus whatever column you're in times this new quantity that I'll denote as M subscript IJ. And 
this is known as the minor of rural i and column j. Okay, so at the moment we're going a little bit in circles and defining quantities by using definitions, by using quantities that I haven't defined yet. So I'll show you how to how to do all this with a uh, an example. All right, so we'll begin by considering a general two by two matrix with elements A, B, lowercase c, and d. All right, and we want to build the cofactor matrix of matrix A. So the first element of the cofactor matrix is given by minus one to the power of one plus one because we're in the first row and first column. And then the minor of row I and column J is determined by finding the determinant of the sub matrix once you've removed row I and column J. So what do I mean by that? If we're looking for the minor of row one and column one, we need to remove all of row one, which is over here, and we remove all of column one, which is this over here. And what we're left is in this case, what we're left with in this case is just a single number D. So we don't need to worry about how to calculate determinants quite yet. We're just left with a number. So the cofactor element C11 is just equal to this quantity. The cofactor element C21 begin in the same way. It's minus one to the power of two plus one because we're looking at row two, column one. And then to calculate the minor of row two and column one, we remove the second row. So we remove all of these quantities and we remove the first column. And what we're left with is this number B. So the minor in this case is just the number B. And you should convince yourselves that the last two cofactor elements are given by this. So this C is the C over here. And the last element is minus one to the power of two plus two. And the minor of row two and column two is just A. So you remove this one and you remove this one and you're just left with this element. So this means that our cofactor matrix is given by D minus B minus C and A. All right. And since we're, uh, we need the transpose of our cofactor matrix, I mentioned before that the way you do this is you flip the rows with the columns. So the element C11, if you flip the rows and the columns, you're still left with 1, 1. So the D remains in place. For element C21, if you flip it, this it now goes to position uh, one two so this now goes over here likewise whatever you had in c12 now comes into the position of c21 so the minus c over here is transposed to be over here and then this one if you flip the rows and the columns you're still left with two two so the a remains in place Okay, so this is the transpose of our cofactor matrix. So, in the last video, we had to find the inverse of a matrix as satisfying this quantity. So when you multiply A by its inverse, you're left with the identity matrix, which for a two by two 
has the following form. Okay, so if we plug in the formula for this, we are left with the following quantity. We know what our matrix A is. We know what the, uh, our matrix C transpose is, but we don't yet know how to calculate the determinant of our matrix A. So we'll leave this as an unknown for now. And if you multiply out matrix A with the transpose of the cofactor, what you're left with is the following matrix. And you should verify this as practice for making sure you understand how to do matrix multiplication. Okay, and we said that this quantity has to be equal to the identity two by two matrix. So each one of these quantities divided by the determinant of A has to equal one. So this means that the determinant of A has to equal AD minus BC for a two by two matrix. All right, so we'll leave it at that for this video. And the next video, uh, we'll go through how to do this for larger matrices.